Today's video will continue our look in various years of Kane's career. In the last video, we looked at the debut of The Big Red Machine, as well how the career of The Undertaker forged the story of Kane. Kane had made his debut by interfering in the Hell in a Cell match at Bad Blood in Your House, defeating Mankind in his in-ring debut, and terrorizing The Undertaker around the end of 1997. 1998 would prove to be an important year for the Devil's Favorite Demon, so let's get started. Undertaker, you will live in hell until you step up and face your brother and meet your judgment day. Rest in peace, ashes to ashes! On the first Roar's War of 1998, a distraught Paul Bearer stated that Kane has abandoned him because of The Undertaker coming to his aid on the last Roar of 1997, hoping that Shawn Michaels destroys the dead man at the Royal Rumble. A week later, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and China welcomed Kane as a new member of D-Generation X, but Undertaker would come out instead, warning Shawn Michaels to leave Kane out of their business. The segment broke out into a two-against-one brawl until Kane appeared. Surprisingly, Kane came to the assistance of his brother instead, chasing off DX before giving salute in Undertaker's traditional in-ring taunt, which The Undertaker returned in kind. It appeared as if the brothers were reunited. The Undertaker would face Shawn Michaels in a casket match for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble. When it appeared The Undertaker had the match won, a number of superstars, including Road Dogg, Billy Gunn, and Salvio Vega ran out and assaulted the dead man, in the hopes of helping Shawn Michaels win the match. Kane would come out and clear the ring, aiding his brother once again. After eliminating the Heartbreak Kid's allies, the Big Red Machine turned on The Undertaker, chokeslamming him into the casket, giving Shawn Michaels the victory. Paul Bearer came out to assist Kane in locking The Undertaker in the casket, before setting it on fire, Kane giving a mocking salute in front of the burning casket. Officials would put out the blaze to find The Undertaker was missing, before the Phenom's voice was heard saying, Kane, until our paths cross again, I shall never rest in peace. The next night on Roar's War, Paul Bear would reveal that the reunion of Kane and Undertaker was nothing but a deception, part of a plan orchestrated by Kane and Paul Bear to destroy the Undertaker. Shortly after, it appeared as if the Undertaker had returned when Druids rolled the remains of the casket to the ring. But once again, it was a ruse when Kane emerged from the casket, mocking his apparently abolished brother. A week later, Kane would appear again, interfering in Vader's match with Goldas when he delivered a tombstone pile driver to the Mastodon, setting up a feud between the two. A week later, Vader challenged Kane to a match at No Way Out in your house, before spraying him with a fire hydrant, forcing Kane to withdraw. Kane would defeat Vader at the pay-per-view with a tombstone pile driver. After the match, the Devil's Favorite Demon would strike Vader with a steel wrench, resulting in Vader being out of action for two months. At the 2nd of March, Kane was scheduled to face Stone Cold Steve Austin, but the Rattlesnake was ambushed by his WrestleMania opponent Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Afterward, Paul Bearer and Kane forced the Timekeeper to toll the ring bell ten times in memory of The Undertaker, disrespecting the man from the dark side, before telling Kane to attack him. When Paul Bearer asked who was left for Kane to face, the lights went out before turning blue. Acquainted gongs were heard, a lightning bolt struck a casket on the stage, and sitting up from the remains was a returning undertaker. The Phenom spoke to his brother that in his absence, he explained to their parents that he had to do the one thing he had promised never to do. Paul Bearer replied that the undertaker was not the Phenom anymore, but Kane himself now bears the title. The Big Red Machine would do his pyro taunt, summoning Hellfire from the stage. The Undertaker, however, just walked through it, seeing that he would walk straight through the fires of Hell to face Kane. The forbidden battle was finally going to take place at WrestleMania 14. For weeks, both Undertaker and Kane played mind games with each other, with the Phenon setting an effigy of Kane on fire, and another occasion with Kane demonstrating that he had the same powers as his brother summoning lightning bolts to strike a light truss, the announcer's table, a production tower, and then a crew member setting him on fire. 
At WrestleMania 14, number 14 of the Cincinnati Reds, Hit King Pete Rose made an appearance as the guest ring announcer for Undertaker and Kane's match. The former member of the baseball team that was also known as the Big Red Machine would continually disrespect the audience of Boston before being confronted by the Big Red Machine of the WWE himself. Kane delivered a tombstone pile driver to the Hit King, with the crowd cheering in ovation despite the fact that Kane at the time was a heel. To put it in baseball terms, strike one. How about it? Despite Kane being the aggressor in the match, The Undertaker defeated his brother by hitting him with not one, not two, but three tombstone pile drivers, making Kane the first superstar to kick out of The Undertaker's finishing move, let alone twice. After the match, Kane assaulted The Undertaker with a steel chair, before tombstoning him on it. It was clear that even though Undertaker had won the match, his war with Kane was far from over. And now for a quick fun facts interval! This would mark the debut of Kane's second attire, the debut Mark II attire. The difference being the black claw mark stripes being much larger than those on the debut Mark I attire, and the corners being sharper instead of curved. Four smaller silver studs are added around each larger silver stud on the left side of Kane's attire. The next night on Roar's War, Paul Bearer would challenge The Undertaker to face Kane one more time in a match that Paul Bearer envisioned in a dream, which the only way to win was to set the opponent on fire. This would set Kane and The Undertaker to face each other in the first ever Inferno match at Unforgiven in your house. The animosity between the brothers reached new heights when Kane destroyed the great sight of his and Undertaker's parents. Then a week later, Kane and Paul Bearer exhumed both their caskets, with Paul Bearer setting the casket belonging to the brothers' father on fire. Kane forwarded Undertaker's attempt to attack Paul Bearer by chokeslamming him into their mother's casket. And now for another fun fact interval! The graveyard segment with Kane and Paul Bearer wasn't done in one take. A mishap occurred when Kane inadvertently snapped the sledgehammer when hitting a tombstone, an unforeseen blooper. Take two. The Inferno match was nothing short of epic as the brothers did battle within the blazing flames. The Undertaker threw Kane over the top ropes, allowing the seven-foot monster to retreat from the fight. The Big Red Machine's attempt was forwarded by a returning Vader, clashing with Kane to the ringside allowing The Undertaker to perform a suicide leap over the flames onto his brother. After knocking out Kane with a steel chair, The Undertaker wounded Paul Bearer with band equipment that was used during a performance by Sawyer Brown. The Undertaker gained the victory by kicking Kane into the flames, setting his right arm ablaze as Kane fled into backstage. And now for a quick fun facts interval! While Kane had been wearing his debut Mark II attire since WrestleMania 14, the Big Red Machine wore his debut Mark I attire for the Inferno match with The Undertaker. It could be assumed that the silver studs were removed from Kane's glove for the Inferno match, and Kane wore another glove afterward. This would be the final time Kane wore the debut Mark I attire, television-wise. The next night on Roar's War, Paul Bearer requested a truce between the brothers, stating that last night that his own son, Kane, was set on fire. The statement would be validated by a blood test. Kane would resume his feud with Vader, gaining revenge on the Mastodon's role at the Inferno match by defeating him in a mask vs. mask match at Over the Edge in your house. Meanwhile, The Undertaker would get involved in the WWE title picture by ruining Vince McMahon's attempt to help Dude Love win the championship from Stone Cold Steve Austin. The night after Over the Edge in your house, The Undertaker stated that his loyalty to Vince McMahon that he had stood by him as his handpicked favorites left for more money had been taken for granted. The Phenon demanded a title shot at the WWE Championship. Vince would approve The Undertaker's request by sending him in a number one contenders match with Kane. It was because of the interference of mankind that Kane was able to defeat The Undertaker and become the number one contender for the WWE Championship. Mankind would ally himself with Kane and Paul Bearer as the masked men would win a tag team Royal Rumble match, earning them a shot at the WWE tag team titles. The two of them would face Steve Austin and Undertaker in a Hell in a Cell match later the night, ending with Undertaker assaulting Paul Bearer who locked himself inside, 
and Steve Austin attacking Kane from the rooftop, preventing the Big Red Machine from saving his father. A week later, Vince McMahon and Kane would reveal the stipulations for the WWE Championship match as the first ever First Blood match, with the winner drawing First Blood on his opponent. Kane would state another stipulation, speaking for the first time with the assistance of a voice aide. If I do not win the title, I will set myself on fire. Kane would appear later that night, playing mind games with Austin by dousing him with fake blood. The Big Red Machine would defeat the Rattlesnake for the WWE Championship at King of the Ring, but the outcome was flooded with controversy. The Hell in a Cell structure that was featured in Undertaker's match with Mankind was lowered twice, and the contestants of that match interfering during the first blood match. Undertaker apparently inadvertently struck Austin with a chair shot, busting him open, before surprisingly revived the referee, giving Kane the victory after seeing the Rattlesnake bleeding. And now, for a quick Fun Facts Interval! This would be the debut of Kane's third mask, the debut Mark Free mask. The difference being the eye holes sagging from the bottom, a wider mouth hole, angular edges around the mouth covering, and the black claw mark stripes similar to the Mark II's. Kane would wear this mask for the rest of 1998. This would also be the debut of Kane's double sleeve attire, featuring multiple longer black claw mark stripes, about 11 stripes from right to left of the attire. Kane's zigzag tights pattern that was only featured on the right leg is now mirrored on the left leg. Kane's attire suffered minor damage during the first blood match when the fourth black stripe was torn around halfway. It was repaired later, with the seam being noticeable. Stone Cold Steve Austin would convince Kane for a WWE Championship rematch the following night on Roar's War, defeating the Big Red Machine and regaining the title, before delivering a stunner to The Undertaker for his role at the King of the Ring, the Phenom being present during the WWE Championship rematch by ringside. Roar's War ended with both Kane and Undertaker staring at Austin, side by side. There were conspiracies about Kane and The Undertaker having reunited, Furthered when the dead man disguised as Kane defeated Mankind to earn a shot at the WWE Championship at SummerSlam. A week later, Kane and Mankind would defeat the New Age Outlaws to become the Tag Team Champions. Vince McMahon would set up Austin and The Undertaker against Kane and Mankind for the Tag Team titles at Fully Loaded in Your House. Austin and Undertaker would win the titles at the pay-per-view when Undertaker delivered a Tombstone Piledriver to Kane for the victory. Despite fighting against his brother during the match, Vince McMahon still believe about the collusion between the brothers, that it took one tombstone power driver on Kane to win the match, as opposed to the three at WrestleMania 14. The conspiracy reached further heights when Kane and Mankind won the tag titles back on the 10th of August, with Kane delivering a chokeslam to his brother for the victory, much to Austin's confusion and frustration. A week later, Steve Austin called out The Undertaker, only to end up being assaulted by Kane, dressed up as the Phenom. Austin threw the Devil's Favorite Demon in a hearse, only to find The Undertaker sitting in the driver's seat, leaving the arena with Kane inside the hearse. On the next episode of Roar's War, conspiracies and rumors were laid to rest. It was now fact. For the first time, Kane and Undertaker, as Jim Ross put it, walked side by side, step for step, brother with brother. The Brothers of Destruction were reunited. Vince McMahon came to the ring and spoke to the brothers, stating that Undertaker and Kane combined were the most awesome, the most destructive force in the history of the WWE, a statement that would be proved true in the following years. Vince then offered The Undertaker the choice of being an ally or foe to the CEO. A distraught Paul Bearer would come out and begged Kane to betray and attack The Undertaker. Conflicted, Kane refused to watch The Undertaker assault his father, but didn't hesitate in attacking Mankind. Vince McMahon would set up the Tag Team Championship partners to face each other in a Hell in a Cell match. The match ended in no contest when after Kane delivered a Tombstone Piledriver to Mankind, was ambushed and busted open by Steve Austin, who earlier stated that he was going to take out one of the brothers. Undertaker would call out Austin to avenge Kane, which led to the dead man declining Vince McMahon's offer, and both Austin and the Brothers of Destruction separated by a flaming rift, staring at each other. 
And now for a quick fun facts interval. While Kane and The Undertaker would officially form a team, they would be officially be referred as the Brothers of Destruction around 2001. However, Jim Ross would refer Kane and Undertaker as the Brothers of the Night when Kane was making his entrance at the Royal Rumble early in the year. Jim Ross, however, would refer them as Brothers of Destruction unofficially on the September the 5th episode of Roy's War. Kane and Mankind were scheduled to defend the tag team titles against the New Age Outlaws in a Falls Count Anywhere match at SummerSlam. With Kane being absent from the arena, Mankind lost the titles against the Outlaws in a de facto handicap match. After the Outlaws threw Mankind into a dumpster they brought out earlier, Kane appeared from inside, picking up a sledgehammer and hitting his former tag team partner with it. The Big Red Machine later appeared during the WWE Championship match, only to be sent back by his brother. Steve Austin would regain the championship, SummerSlam ending with both Kane and The Undertaker staring at the rattlesnake from the entrance. On Raw Saturday night after SummerSlam, Vince McMahon berated Undertaker for refusing the assistance of Kane in his match against Austin at SummerSlam, before mocking the brothers by stating he and several superstars believed they had gone soft. Kane and Undertaker pursued the owner of the WWE throughout the show. Kane using the sledgehammer he bashed Mankind to open the door to Vince McMahon's office. The Brothers of Destruction would also attack several superstars during the majority of Roar. And now, for a quick fun facts interval! For reasons not known, Kane wore his debut Mark II attire at SummerSlam and the following Roar's War episode. It could be assumed that Kane's double sleeped attire was in need of repair because of Kane's Hell in a Cell match with Mankind. The next following night on Sunday Night Heat, Vince McMahon revealed that inciting the wrath of the Brothers of Destruction was part of a master plan. That plan being Austin defending the WWE Championship against both The Undertaker and Kane at Breakdown in Your House. The Brothers of Destruction had formed a business alliance with the owner of the WWE that they get the title shot in exchange of protection against the Rattlesnake. The odds were stacked against the WWE Champion as Kane and Undertaker were prohibited from defeating each other in the Triple Threat match. But the brothers squabbled with each other as to who would be the champion. The difficulties with the brothers would be sorted out as Undertaker and Kane delivered a double chokeslam before both of them covered Austin for the winning pinfall, making the WWE Championship vacant. The next night on Roar's War, Vince McMahon was about to declare the WWE Champion until Austin disrupted the ceremony by barging into the arena on a Zamboni and attacking the WWE owner as the brothers watched. After Stone Cold Steve Austin was arrested and escorted out of the arena, an irate Vince McMahon chastised the brothers for refusing to live out on their end of the deal three times, declaring that Undertaker and Kane would face each other for the WWE Championship at Judgment Day in your house and naming Austin as the guest referee out of spite for the former WWE Champion. Vince McMahon unfortunately pushed his luck by insulting the brothers, calling Kane physically handicapped and Undertaker mentally handicapped. The owner of the WWE made a grievous error by giving Undertaker the finger after the Phenom vowed that McMahon would be handicapped should he get out of line with either one of the brothers. The Brothers of Destruction would live up to that vow when they assaulted the owner of the WWE before breaking his leg by crushing it with the steel steps. Tensions would somewhat show when Undertaker and Kane would inadvertently hinder their matches. Undertaker costing his brother a match with Ken Shanrock, and the Seven Foot Monster hitting the dead man with a chair during a match with The Rock later that evening. The Brothers of Destruction apparently put any differences to rest when they bid each other good luck before their WWE Championship match at Judgment Day in your house. Things would get out of control when Kane Irish whipped his brother into Austin before giving the Rattlesnake a choke slam. When it appeared the Big Red Machine had the match won, Paul Bearer came to the ring with a chair in hand, asking his son to let him hit the Undertaker with it. Just as Kane turned away, Paul Bearer betrayed his son by hitting him with it instead. As Kane attempted to attack his father for his treachery, the Undertaker knocked out his brother with the same chair. The match ended with no contest when Austin hid The Undertaker with the chair and counted both brothers, leaving the WWE Championship still vacant. And now, for a quick fun facts interval! This would mark the debut of Kane's third attire, the debut Mark III attire. The difference being the return of the one sleeve, the black claw mark stripes being longer and thinner, similar to the design on the double sleeved attire, 
and two smaller silver studs placed between the larger studs. Kane wore the debut Mark II attire for the final time on the October 5th episode of Roar's War. The next night on Roar's War, Undertaker and Paul Bear announced their reconciliation, the father of Kane stating that he had been using him and no longer had any use for the Big Red Machine because he believed that Kane never understood the darkness. The Undertaker would then shamelessly admit setting the family home on fire that resulted in Kane being scarred and the deaths of their parents because Kane was weak. This revelation would not only turn Undertaker heel and Kane a tweener, but mark the debut of the Undertaker's Ministry of Darkness persona. Kane would challenge his brother to a casket match, which ended in no contest when both brothers were inside the casket, destroying it from the inside. Alone for the first time, a rudderless Kane would go on the warpath, destroying several superstars before confronting his brother during a brawl with Austin inside a steel cage. The Devil's favorite demon would perform his signature pyro taunt, setting the steel cage on fire before the seven-foot monster joined Austin in the brawl against the Undertaker. Kane would attempt an attack on his brother the week later, intending to strike the Undertaker with a fireball, but the Phenom used X-Pac as a shield, striking him inadvertently instead. Kane attempted to set Gangrel, Christian, Edge, and even a referee on fire later on the same night. Kane and the Undertaker would take part in the Daily Game Tournament at Survivor Series, with the Phenom gaining the victory in the quarterfinals thanks to the assistance of Paul Bearer. The Big Red Machine would return the favor by costing his brother a victory in the semi-finals. Kane would continue to interfere in Undertaker and Paul Bearer's plans, preventing the Phenom from embalming Stone Cold Steve Austin alive, allowing the Rattlesnake to escape as the Big Red Machine assaulted his brother. Kane and Austin would form an alliance, the Rattlesnake foiling the Undertaker and Paul Bearer's attempts to have Kane committed to a mental institute by placing a Kane mask on an unconscious Undertaker, thus having him taken away by the orderlies instead, before he and Kane threw Paul Bearer into a sewer. Kane would compete in a fatal four-way match against The Undertaker, Mankind, and Steve Austin at the UK pay-per-view Capital Carnage, Austin gaining the victory by hitting Kane with two stunners. Kane would appear during Undertaker's Buried Alive match against Austin at Rock Bottom in Your House, coming out of the grave and attacking his brother. The Big Red Machine delivered a tombstone pile driver to his brother, pushing him into the grave and allowing Austin to bury the Phenom alive and gain the victory, as well as earning a spot in the 1999 Royal Rumble. The following night on Raw's War, Vince McMahon would have Kane committed to a mental institute for his role at Rock Bottom in Your House. Kane would appear a week later during a tag match between WWE Champion The Rock and Test of the Corporation against Triple H and X-Pac of D-Generation X. Surprisingly, the Devil's Favorite Demon delivered a choke slam to every member of DX except China, apparently joining the corporation. It was revealed on Sunday Night Heat that Vince McMahon blackmailed Kane into joining the corporation and doing his bidding, with the threat of being sent back to the mental institution should he get out of line, talking down at the Big Red Machine, even having him thank the owner of the WWE, as well as making coffee for him. Kane would compete on the last Roars War of 1998, defeating Billy Gunn by disqualification. And that was our look at 1998 for Kane. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as I did making it. On the next episode, we'll be looking at 1999 for the Big Red Machine, from his story with the Corporation, his WrestleMania feud with Triple H, and see the evolution of his character with his partnership with X-Pac. Thanks again, and see you next time.